Dear reviewer, good evening and welcome to Current Issue. With me, Tommy Stallworth, he is the senior advisor to the Governor Whitmer and he is the director of Corona uh, Virus Racial Disparate Tax Force. Uh, Tommy, welcome to MEA TV and radio. Oh, thank you, Wally. Thank you for having me. Thank you. First, let's talk about the, the, the talk of today is the coronavirus and distribution. Uh, and lately, we've been having some problem with distribution. Can you t tell us more about why is that and when we're going to have more vaccine going to especially the, the metro area of Detroit? Sure. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of concern relative to how the vaccine will be distributed. Uh, quite frankly, though, um, the biggest part of the problem we're facing now is uh, just the availability. Okay. Um, so we don't have the supply uh, that we need. Um, our new president, President Biden, is, yes. as you all will likely know, He's going to be here to, uh, today, and uh, he's going to visit the facility. Yeah, he's going to visit Pfizer, yeah. And he has he's taken steps to purchase uh, additional supply uh, from the manufacturers, something that our prior president did not do. And so when we started this process, we really did not have enough supply to meet the demand. Yes. Um, and I think it's important for, for your listeners to remember uh, that this is a this is a global pandemic, of course. Uh, and and right now um, there are we're in competition with everyone else in the world. Uh, Ten countries uh, in the world uh, right now have received seventy four percent of the vaccines that are available, um, which means dozens of countries have received zero. Um, and so I only share that information for perspective to say, to reinforce the fact that we're still very early in the process and we have not had enough time to manufacture enough supply uh, to really meet a global need. Well, we have to take care of ourselves first and then the global. And our president said in the first 100, year, 100 uh, days, we're going to have 100, 100 million uh, vaccines. Are we in, 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 in the right direction? Oh, yeah. I think we're, we're, gonna see, uh, we're going to see a significant uptick in the availability of vaccines over the next few weeks. Um, such that I think people will be satisfied that they can get through. But let's not fool ourselves. It's going to still take time. Um, it's going to take time to continue to manufacture uh, the vaccines, and it's going to take time to schedule people and get them uh, vaccinated. Um, that goal really is to make sure or attempt to get 70% of our population in Michigan vaccinated uh, by the end of the fall. Okay. Um, that kind of gives you a window of the time frame. And again, um, I don't, when I give the global perspective, it's not to suggest we don't take care of ourselves first. It is to suggest that um, when we think about how much supply is needed, yes. um, you know, our systems weren't really built to produce uh, vaccines for that many people that quickly. Um, so our manufacturers are ramping up every time they uh, the CDC approves a new vaccine uh, that helps uh, and our manufacturers are getting better and better at producing the vaccines such that over you know we will continue to see a significant increase and the availability, and then and people can receive it much more quickly. Okay. When the supply comes, do we have what it takes to deliver it to our people's arm, especially, as I mentioned, in area needed in, in, in Metro Detroit? Yeah, I think in Michigan we're going to be very pleased with the results. Um, and, 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 of course, we're very sensitive to uh, the populations that have special needs. Uh, and so... Uh, right now, as we speak, we are 
we're building infrastructure to be able to deliver the vaccine at community uh, health centers. Uh, we are building uh, infrastructure that would allow us uh, to send out mobile units uh, to locations where people are uh, isolated and unable to travel to get their vaccinations. You know, we have in Detroit alone 4,000 homebound seniors who yes. uh, we may have to actually deliver the vaccines to them. And so uh, we're in the planning stages of how we address those needs uh, and get the vaccines to those who want it. Um, we recognize we've got um, heading into spring, keep your fingers crossed. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, you know, well next spring, week is going to uh, get better with the weather. <laughs> yeah, let us pray. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah. uh, with, with, with the changing season, we'll have more uh, migrant workers in the state who will need to get vaccinated as well. And, and so we're thinking and planning uh, for that as people enter the state and uh, have not been vaccinated, making that vaccine available to them. Okay. Um, so we'll get there. Okay. Mr. Saworth, this month is very special month, especially we see in our country divided and the Black History Month, and, and, and we should celebrate it to the max and bring not just the African-American, but all the ethnic minority together who face the same issue. And, and, and you know, so what we are doing with the, with, with the Black History Month, are we, for example, uh, getting together to relay a better message? Are we uh, celebrating the, the legend of, of many, many African-Americans throughout the history? Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, this is a, an important month, and I'm, I'm glad you, you mentioned it. And it's, it's important uh, in, in many ways. Uh, first, it's important that, uh, you know, we begin to tell um, and, and, and understand, um, you know, an accurate history of uh, the African-American people. Uh, their journey in America and the racism, discrimination, the trials and tribulations, but also the contributions yes. uh, that have been made to, uh, to uh, this country. But secondly, uh, we acknowledge and recognize that uh, those contributions um, are also an example of what other racial and ethnic groups have contributed as well. The great thing about this country is that it is made up of many, many different races and ethnicities, all of whom Special. have had a positive impact on the culture, uh, on the history, and the quality of life. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the country has a history of racial discrimination as well. Um, and we all need to pull together uh, to make sure that we are building a society that is respectful and inclusive um, of everyone's history, culture, and right to uh, a, um, you know, a, a fulfilling life. Yes. You know, you are, you are absolutely right, especially in the state of Michigan. We have multi, uh, uh, of, of all, almost all the ethnic minority. We have, we have the African American, the Arab American, the Latino, the, the Asian, and all that. And, and yeah. honestly, Tommy, they all face the same issue. If you yeah. go to all the community, by working together, by celebrating each other, it's going to be benefiting everybody. And especially in this time that, that the radicals are, are looking at us, we're not American. You know, uh, if you're not white, 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 you're not American, you know. And, and, and we have to, to, to tell them that we, we've been contributing so much, by far more than they do, to the, our society and to, to each other. Sure, sure, yeah. And I think, again, the, the thing is we want to, we're very polarized right now, um, and we're polarized around along racial lines uh, and ethnic lines and, and oftentimes religious lines. Yes. 
Um, and so, uh, but we can't uh, practice, we, can, we can't protest hate and then practice hate at the same time. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm a person that believes very strongly that, um, you know, we need to be respectful. We need to be respectful of everyone's culture uh, as long as it is one that is based and anchored in love and respect. Yes. Uh, that being said, hate comes in all colors, right? Uh, yes. So yes. We, we want we want to make sure that uh, we're not a part of that. Yeah. Uh, we've had some pretty dramatic experiences here in Michigan. Um, With the attack uh, at the at, at in the Lansing attack in our capital, and and yeah. what, yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah, very. It was horrible. It's horrible. Um, and I think uh, a lot of misguided people uh, who are frustrated, uh, alienated, um, and uh, wanting to change their lives but not knowing how. Mm -hmm. And they're striking out at the wrong targets, quite frankly. Um, I think Black History Month is a place, a time where we begin to get a clearer understanding that we all have much more in common than we have that separates us. Absolutely. So to the degree, yeah, to the degree we can remember that and learn from it and pull together, we can change, we can transform this society uh, so that it serves us all. Uh, uh, Tommy, do you think that people are sitting home and uh, during that COVID time and, and the stress and 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 the problem and the mental health problem we have because of that is reflect what we see. You know, you raise a very important point. Um, you know, I, I again, I don't think that um, we as citizens, as individuals, uh, really uh, commit enough time. Um, to advocating for those who have less, those who are in need, and understanding the problems they face. Uh, this coronavirus has, has been a tragedy on our society. Absolutely. Um, so many people have died. So many families are suffering uh, from loss. And the loss of family members, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, loss of homes, um, and certainly that carries with it things like stress uh, and depression that result in, in mental illness uh, and the need for uh, help and support. And we need to be aware of that. We need to make sure that we're providing those kind of services uh, and have that kind of empathy and, and sensitivity. Um, you know, early in the pandemic, 2020, uh, African Americans were, our uh, black citizens were dying at five times the rate of, of white citizens from this virus. Yes. Looking, Almost virtually everybody was touched. Yes. Tommy, looking uh, at this, looking at this, that means there is a lot of a problem, a lot of issue with the African American and the other ethnic minority. We have to take care of it. We don't have yes. we don't have to wait to something like Corona happen and see the tragedy that losing life and all that. We there's a lot of issue and you know in, in, especially in the urban area, the yes. family separated, the, the the loss of job, the loss of everything they have. We have to take care of that. We have to enhance the the quality of, of people living. So so when something happened like this, we are ready for it. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, the answers are right in front of us. We've just got to fight to, to, to uh, deliver. Um, what makes uh, ethnic communities and the black community most vulnerable to pandemics and other uh, health uh, uh, issues is both the uh, issue of poverty, yes. underemployment, mm -hmm. and uh, the absence of health insurance. Uh, it's hard to be healthy in this world if you can't see a doctor regularly. Absolutely. Uh, if you can't treat the ailments that you uh, encounter. And so one of the things that we're really focused on is making is trying to increase 
the opportunity and the accessibility for those who don't have health insurance yes. to get it. And the governor is wholly committed to doing that. Uh, and by doing so, uh, to the degree we can connect people who need health insurance with health plans uh, and get them covered, uh, then we can take care of their health issues uh, and they'll be less susceptible to things like the coronavirus. Yes. Uh, thanks God we have, we have administration in Washington that look and care about all the people, not certain people. Do you yes. think, do you think they are, they are working fast enough? Because we have a lot of problems. And, 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 and the last administration, we don't want to knock anybody's down, but it created a lot of problems. And, and we have to fix all of them. Do you think the administration uh, within six months to a year could take care of all that problem we have? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, six, I mean, at least, years. at least something, you know, at least yeah. something, you know. Yeah, well, I think our first, our first hurdle uh, uh, is going to be how we manage uh, through this uh, coronavirus. Uh, if we can get the vaccine manufactured and delivered in a fair and equitable way, uh, so people who want to be vaccinated get the vaccination. Um, if we can do that during 2021, maybe by Christmas time, get back to normal living. Yes, I think everybody will be be very pleased uh, uh, with the effort and the administration. I know, I know the governor is committed to that. Uh, I know the uh, president uh, by Biden as as well. But that's got to be our first, uh, you know, our, our first litmus test. And after we do that, uh, and, you know, we've got to make sure that we rebuild our economy, get people back to work, True. Uh, um, you know, get, um, get them back in, in a place where they can afford their homes uh, and, and take care of their families. Yes. Um, you know, those are kind of the two things that we should be looking to see happen during the course of this year. Yes. Uh, Tommy, do you see enough working together between the ethnic minorities in Michigan and what's the office of the governor doing to enhance that relation and to bring everybody together? Yeah, I, you know, I think, um, I, of course we can always do better, right? Yes. Um, but I think the intention is there. Um, on our on our racial disparities task force, I mean, we start with the question of uh, black Americans who are who have suffered the most as a result of the virus. But we don't say that to the exclusion mm -hmm. of the Hispanic population, um, the Asian population, the uh, Arab American population, uh, the disabled. Uh, population, uh, migrant workers, yes. you know, Native Americans, we have included, made an effort to look at how this virus has impacted all communities of color okay. and, and, and create um, uh, initiatives or interventions uh, to help reverse those impacts. Uh, Tommy, we cater to about uh, about almost 450,000 uh, Middle Eastern Arab American community in Michigan and about 9 million nationwide. What's your message? What do you like to tell them uh, to get involved more? To, to what? Give me a yeah. message from you within like a minute or two. Yeah, well, well, well first I just want to articulate how proud I am of them for their transition into the United States and their contribution to our community. I'm very proud of the, the breadth and depth of the Arab American community uh, here in Michigan. Um, and they, uh, quite frankly, uh, give us a flavor uh, that doesn't exist in a lot of other places. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, each one contributes in its own ways, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm very proud, very proud, very, very, very proud of that. And, and, and I would say, 
and and my message to them is to continue to uh, work to be fully engaged in the political system here. Yes, uh, in the United States, uh, that we have we are blessed to live in a democracy, but a, de- a democracy uh, by definition requires in- involvement. Exactly. And so it's each individual's voice that needs to be heard and expressed through the ballot box, and that's what will determine uh, the trajectory of this country. And so uh, I would encourage them to be stay. If you're not involved politically, get involved. Right. Uh, if you are involved, stay involved. Absolutely. Uh, and, and express yourself uh, at the ballot box. Well, honestly, on behalf of the whole Middle East and Arab American community, we thank you. Thank you for your effort in bringing all the ethnic minority together with the community at large and make it all one family. And we thank you for, for your effort uh, to tackle the, the, the coronavirus and, and try to, to vaccinate as, as many people as we could. Especially, we start with the with the senior citizen, which is right. which is should we start first with them, and 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 I know, uh, yes, we we been through almost a year of uh, of a lot of stress, a lot of uh, uh, yes. not 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 getting involved, but I yeah. know our our governor, she is very open-minded and i know when when we get everybody vaccine when we get people uh, back to work and she's going to enhance our economy and that's very important to get the people engaged in their work and their family and all that so we thank you and uh, please relay our thanks and appreciation to our governor i will i will wally thank you so much thank you uh, for having me and uh i pray um, for uh, health and safety uh, for all of your listeners. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, that was my interview with Tammy Stellworth. He is the senior advisor to our governor, Governor of Michigan, uh, Whitmer. And, and honestly, he is heading a tax force that, that uh, getting the vaccine, the coronavirus. And, and as you listen to him, is if we don't work together, if we, all the ethnic minority, with the community at large, if we work together for the benefit of each other, it'll be very hard for us to get back again together. You know, yes, we are on through that bad years, but the future is here. And we have a good governor, and we have a person uh, in Tommy, which is the advisor to her, and, and we thank him so much for the great job they're doing to bring us together. Thanks for watching, and good night.